We now proceed to session two of the round table, making it work, Sharia rulings on repo facility, moderated by Professor Dr. Ashraf Muhammad Hashim, Chief Executive Officer of the International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance, the ISRA Consultancy, and also serves as member of the ILM Sharia Committee. Professor Ashraf? Thank you, uh, Ms. Chairperson. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. His Excellency Sheikh Abdullah Saud al-Thani, Chairman of IILM Governing Board, Dr. Omar Hussaini, CEO, Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Ali Al-Ghari, uh, our Chairman of uh, Shariah Board of IILM, respected Mashayikh and all uh, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is a very, uh, it is my pleasure to chair this uh, particular session. Uh, I think this is uh, an important session and we have been given uh, more time for this session. Alhamdulillah, we have 90 minutes. Uh, although 90 minutes is not uh, too long, but it is, uh, I mean, hopefully we can benefit from this 90 minutes. Uh, for this session, my dear uh, respected Mashayikh and um, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, divide this session into two rounds. Uh, round number one, uh, we'll be talking about uh, maybe the current structure, the challenges. If you look at the list of the speakers, you can see that uh, each and every one of them, they have vast experience in uh, structuring repo, in dealing with repo, and maybe they can share those structures, uh, particularly uh, also in dealing with Sharia issues related to them. Uh, it has been uh, mentioned in the first session, a few of uh, Sharia uh, issues, maybe the unilateral, bilateral wa'ad, uh, sell and buy back price, uh, underlying asset, uh, if it becomes Sharia non-compliant, trading of collaterals, uh, real transfer of ownership, hypothecation, uh, so on and so forth. So this will be the first round where uh, I would like to invite our Mashayikh to give their opinion on this and maybe to give, uh, I mean, on the structures, what are the, uh, on the challenges, on the Sharia issues, what uh, are the solution for them. And inshallah, in the uh, round two, uh, we would like, to talk on a way forward, how to move forward. Uh, we heard from the first session that they are looking at standardization. Yeah. They are looking to, uh, I mean, uh, to get uh, most, or if not, if not all, most of the futures of uh, conventional repo, yeah. Islamic repo. This is their wish. So uh, what, what would be your opinion uh, in this? So this will be tackled in the second round, inshallah. So to begin with, uh, in this first round, I would like to invite Sheikh Professor Dr. Ali Mohyedin Al-Qaradawi uh, to talk about uh, this issue. Falaitafaddal mashkura, Sheikhina. Shukran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi. وصحبه ومن تبع هدى أصحاب الفضيلة والسعادة إخوة الكرام أخوات الكريمات سلام الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته يسعدني أن أكون مع حضراتكم في هذه الجلسة أو المائدة المستديرة وإن كانت المائدة ليست حقيقية وإنما هي يعني زومية إن صح التعبير فلا مانع من ذلك فنحن نعتبرها عندنا في الفقه الإسلامي الاعتبارات هناك أشياء ليست حقائق لكنها اعتبارات ولكن لها تأثيرها مثل الذمة مثل الشخصية الاعتبارية وما أشبه ذلك عموما الموضوع حقيقة في غاية من الأهمية ولا شك أننا جميعا حريصون على وجود بدائل الشرعية مع حفاظنا كاقتصاد إسلامي على تميزنا تميز الاقتصاد الإسلامي فالحقيقة نوحشت هذه المسألة من سنوات طويلة جدا وأصل المصطلح ريبو لا يخفى على حضراتكم بهذا المصطلح هو معناه يعني 
لانه لابد نحن نحتيم المصطلحات لا يمكن نقول لا سامح الله مثلا ربا حلال ربا يعني ربا انترست يعني انترست لا مؤاخذه لا اروح الى اشياء اخرى فلذلك انا لست مع هذا المصطلح بصراحه اساسا الريف الاسلامي لانه يعني الريف له مصطلح وحتى كلمه غير عربيه له معناه الخاص وهو عباره لا يخفى على حضراتكم اعاده بيع السندات وإعادة شرائها يترتب عليها فوائد يعني معروفة لدى حضراتكم وقد حاول بعض الإخوة الكرام من زمان أن أنا على أن يجدوا لها يعني بديلا أو عفوا مش بديل أن يجدوا لها يعني حلا أو شيئا فقهيا لكنهم حقيقة لن يوفقوا ولكن لا مانع إحنا نبحث عن البدائل يعني مثلا لما قلنا يعني الربا حرام جبنا المرابح جيد أنا حقيقة أنا ولذلك أرجو من إخواني أننا حقيقة صحيح لا مشاحة في المصطلحات لكن المصطلحات مهمة في الإسلام القرآن الكريم كل يقول إيش يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقولوا راعنا وقولوا انظرنا رغم أنه كلمتين في أصل اللغة العربية بمعنى واحد راعنا مراعاة آه، انظرنا يعني انظر الي بشف نفس المعنى لكن ان هذا المصطلح راعنا كان اليهود يستعملها في معنى فنهي فنهينا عنه فلذلك خلي نقول مثل يعني ما سميناه في عفوا في مجز في المعيار الشرعي 57 سميناه اعاده الشراء معقول يعني اعاده الشراء ويصبح مصطلح اسلامي وطبعا يعني معيار اسف معيار 58 سما اعاده الشراء وعرفها ثم بعد ذلك وجد لها الضوابط الشرعيه وهو انه يجوز اذا توافرت فيه اربعه شروط ان يكون هنا البيع حقيقي او ان يكون البيع حقيقيا وان يكون الشراء اللاحق بعقد مستقل وأن لا يكون العقد الثاني مشروطا في العقد الأول وأن لا يكون هناك مواطأة على إعادة الشراء إلى آخرها ثم بعد ذلك في مادة ثلاثة أجازت آسف أجازت هذه المادة إعادة الشراء وإن كان ثمن المؤجل أكثر بشروط وضوابط فنحن حقيقة أولا لو رتبنا بهذا الترتيب لا مانع عندنا في هذا المجال وأنا أعلم الان مثلا البدائل الموجوده كلها ما دامت شرعيه سميت ريكو سمي اي شيء هي حقيقه يعني في الامارات بالمناسبه في البحرين من 2007 طرحت فكره اعاده الشراء من خلال يعني بيع اوراق ماليه وفي الامارات احنا شاركنا فيها في عام 2011 في هذا المجال وكذلك الآن مثل ما تفضلتم في السعودية حقيقة الذي يكون شرعيا فيها بيع شراء فيها شيء حتى ولو سمينا بيع العينة فهو بيع فهذا حقيقة أنا الذي أؤكد عليه أؤكد على يعني الضوابط وأؤكد على التسمية وحريص أيضا على أنني لا أشك في أن ريفو حقيقة في منافع توفير السيولة بتكلفة أقل ومرونة أكبر تحسين حركة النقد وأيضا تشجيع سوق السفور أو سوق أو ما أشبه ذلك فهذا حقيقة يعني مهم جدا وأنا أيضا إذا تسمحوا لي يعني عندنا بدائل أخرى غير هذا البدائل بدائل حقيقية من خلال عقد المضاربة ولكن بشيء من إدخال جزئية في عقد المضاربة وهو يكون عقد مضاربة دوار يعني أنا أتفق مع حضرتك مع حضرتك كبنك أنا كبنك وأنت كبنك أخلي في حسابي لك الحق أن تسحب من حسابي بمجرد ما سحبت من حسابي يحسب لنا نسبة المضاربة الشرعية وصحيح هو ولذلك أنا أستعمل هذا المال الذي عندي مش مثل الآن أعطيك مليون وأحسب لك يعني أرباح لا أخلي في حسابك لكن هذا الحساب لي حق في في التعامل فهذا ممكن حقيقة هذا المضاربة الذي سميناها أو أنا سميتها حقيقة في بحثي حول ريفو وسمينا إعادة الشراء 
بانه يعني يعني دواها ومتحركه وايضا مثل مثل البنوك الاسلاميه، البنوك الاسلاميه حضرتك تدع فيها فلوس من نفس اليوم او اليوم الثاني تحسب الارباح، فممكن هذا نستفيد منها حقيقه. ايضا انا اقترح حقيقه ما دمنا انتم موجودين وهذا ما حقيقه قلناه يعني من عده سنوات نرتب نحن لماذا نحن دائما لو دخلوا جحر ضب لماذا يعني حتى وان كان من باب المزح لما الخطيب قال اخرجه يعني ايها المسلمون لا تفعلوا ان سيدنا يقول لو دخلوا جحر ضب لدخلتموه قال اخرجه الترمذي فشخص الاخر قال ما دام سيدنا الترمذي اخرج الضب ليش انتم زعلانين؟ فاحنا اخوتي الكرام هذا من باب المزح من باب تلطيف الجو فلذلك نحن علينا ان نبحث عن 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 صيدليتنا بدل ما نبحث عن صيدليه الغرب والراسماليه خلي نبحث عن صيدليتنا يعني لماذا نحن الان في البنوك الاسلاميه نبحث عن ترتيب محفظه استثمار كبيره ب 100 بمليار بمليارين هذه المحفظه للاصول والاعيان والحقوق والمنافع وال والصفوف وما اشبه ذلك ونقسمها على وحدات استثماريه كل يوم تقوم يوميا صباحا ومساء فانا اشتري صباحا وابيع مساء او بالعكس فهذا ممكن حقيقه هذا ويمكن بعض الاخوه الكرام من اخواننا الشرعيين كان حقيقه هذه هذه الفكره طرحت وطرحنا لكنه حقيقه لم نجد الى الان اذانا صاغيه. كذلك ايضا ممكن ايضا من خلال يعني عفوا حتى التورط بضوابطه ما عندنا مشكله فيها ايضا اشياء كثيره جدا في هذا المجال او خاصه الادوات التي تبدا بالاعيان ولكن تنتهي بالديون، هناك حقيقه يعني بدائل كثيره جدا في هذا المجال. فهذا ما اردت بيانه اخوتي الكرام باختصار شديد واذا اردتم ان ندخل في تفاصيل المناقشه لهذه الافكار يمكن انني حاضر وجاهز بارك الله فيكم. بارك الله فيكم شيخنا ات از ا جود اند جريت اوبننج فور ذيس سيشن وذ ذا تشالنج بيفور اس اون ذا تيرم اوف ريبو اي سيلف اند شيخ كيم وذ سام Uh, alternative uh, mudaraba for example and the challenge that we should find our medicine from our pharmacy <laughs> from uh, and uh, with that I think we can go to the uh, second panelist uh, Sheikh Professor Dr. Muhammad Elgari we have heard Dr. Elgari uh, in the first session from Mr. Hamza Khalid Bawazir on the repo uh, from the uh, Uh, SNB, um, I think he touched about the uh, two unilateral wa'ad, so and so forth. Maybe you can elaborate further uh, about this and uh, how do you think this can uh, assist us in achieving the uh, standardization in repo? Kalia Tafadwal, Mashkura, Sheikhuna. Mr. Moderator, <coughs> can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to apologize for failing to join early because, unfortunately, all the sets and uh, computers and the uh, uh, other equipment, uh, we failed to go into uh, uh, the Zoom because it required update and uh, it just refuses to update. But finally, alhamdulillah, we were instructed by some of the technical people in IILM. And uh, finally, I am with you. And uh, I, I, I am sure uh, Brother Hamza Bawazir has uh, explained the new structure of Rebu, which was developed in the uh, SNB. Now, uh, I need not uh, uh, elaborate on what has been said about the importance of Rebu in uh, liquidity management. And as I mentioned in my opening speech, uh, the transactions in Rebo in the United States alone is in the trillions of dollars every day. 
So that shows how important the repo is in uh, in uh, managing liquidity. And the repo is a very important tool also for central banks to regulate the banking uh, system in any country. Uh, so it is important that we in Islamic banking, in Islamic finance, to have our own structure for repo that meets all the Sharia requirements and at the same time, it can fit all the risk and regulatory requirements. The, this repo structure, which was developed in uh, the, the Saudi National Bank and with the, with the uh, full uh, cooperation between the people in the treasury of the bank and in the Islamic uh, banking division in the bank and uh, with the Sharia board, uh, is based on the two words. There were some problems in, in, uh, in, the, in the structures for Rebo, which were developed before and were, were in vogue for uh, some time in the banking sector. Which, which are based on the collateralized muraba. This uh, structure actually really fits very nicely into all the requirements of standards, of system, of uh, sharia and uh, uh, regulation by central banks. In the collateralized muraba, there was the problem of the collateral because as you know, uh, a bank will, uh, or any entity, will uh, uh, sell securities because they need cash. So uh, the other party, when it is, when it receives this uh, sukuk, for instance, as a collateral, it becomes a problem to sell them because they don't really don't own them. They are owned by the other party. So this. St structure does not have this problem because it is based on on purchase and uh, a, an undertaking to buy back similar securities. And the other problem was the coupon. Now, in this structure, the coupon, of course, the purchaser, the the, the party that needs liquidity, will not uh, keep the. Uh, uh, so Coop, it will, it will sell them. Either, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the other party, which is holding them in the previous uh, structure as collateral, is supposed to sell this uh, uh, Coop. So because the transaction is actually sale, they can sell because they own them. But based on the conventional repo structure, uh, they are supposed to receive the coupon. So the coupon problem was solved by building this coupon payment into the sale price or the repurchase price. Uh, and uh, even if uh, the other party would like to receive the coupon timely, I mean, whenever the coupon was, is paid, it can be structured so that the coupon payment is made as installments in the future uh, uh, sale price. So the coupon problem is, is not a problem anymore. And the third one is related to default. Under the uh, other alternative uh, structure, which is based on Murabaha, uh, when the other party defaults to honor its commitment, some of the Sharia scholars, they say, you are only entitled to an equivalent at the market price. But forgetting that the other party will default only when it sees that there is benefit of default. If all it needs to do uh, uh, to alleviate the harm inflicted on the other party is to uh, uh, pay the going market price. So th this way, an incentive is created for one party to, de to default. But under this structure, uh, what you need to compensate for is the actual harm you inflicted on the other party. And this harm actually is the, uh, the, the missed opportunity to receive the price exactly as mentioned in the undertaking. 
So it actually closes the door for creating an incentive to default, and furthermore, fairly compensate the other party in case of default. Now, uh, the people in SMB actually spent a lot of time developing this structure and the related documentation. And uh, a symposium was held, which included all the Sharia boards in uh, Saudi banks. And Alhamdulillah, it was approved uh, with almost all. There was some reservation from one bank, but uh, almost all of the banks have approved it. And lately, the uh, central bank in Saudi Arabia has actually officially adapted the structure. And it will be uh, already some transactions have uh, been done uh, based on this structure with, with very smooth and very successful. And uh, the next step will be uh, creating a clearing house where the uh, transactions will be done uh, system wise and the clearing house will improve the quality of this structure by actually guaranteeing the performance of each party. Now, this will be uh, fully uh, substitute, full substitute for the conventional repo, and it will go a long way, actually, in availing to Islamic finance a tool to manage liquidity in an efficient and a very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, doable and profitable way. And uh, alhamdulillah, I think we should at one point celebrate this accomplishment and congratulate the people at SMB for their, uh, I mean, exceptional performance. And we hope more and more will come. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sheikh Algari. I think uh, uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, the purchase by of similar securities, the, how they settle the coupon uh, issue, the default issue, so and so forth. Uh, maybe uh, if you have any question, please uh, type it in question and answer session. And for speakers, I think from now, you can look at the question and answer uh, column. If you think you want to answer any of the question, we will come back to those questions at the end of the session, inshallah. So uh, now uh, I'm going to Sheikh Nizam uh, Yaqubi. Uh, share maybe uh, share your just your experience, <laughs> and uh, in addition to what has been said by uh, Dr. El Gari and uh, Sheikh Ali Al Quradari. Dr. Nizam, you are still on mute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulullah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Thank you, brothers and Dr. Ashraf and all of the brothers and sisters who have been uh, preparing for this webinar for a long time and jazahum Allah khair and uh, inshallah I am sure that it will be a very fruitful one. Um, I don't have too much to add to what our esteemed Mashayikh uh, uh, Sheikh Al-Qaradaghi Hafizahullah and Dr. Sheikh Al-Gari Hafizahullah have mentioned. Um, yani historically all these structures have been used from time to time, whether it is unilateral wa'ad or whether it is the two wa'ad structure uh, or whether it was the collateral murabaha, uh, collateralized murabaha. Uh, they have all been used uh, uh, to uh, certain uh, types of successes and failures in different parts. But I think uh, the two structure of the uh, the SNB, which uh, Fadilat Sheikh Al Gari has just now mentioned, uh, uh, is the promising for the future uh, because it has been uh, accepted widely by many Sharia boards in Saudi Arabia and also by the regulators there, and uh, and also in many other areas they are looking at it, and some of them have even started using it. So I think this will be a, a very good tool to unify 
the the entire structures that we have everywhere if possible and i also agree <coughs> with sheikh algari that the important thing here uh, is to find a strong clearing house uh, if we look at the conventional repos uh, the the main characteristics is that they have strong clearing houses so if we can uh, establish as a centralized Islamic clearing house, uh, yani by the help of international institutions like IDB and uh, the likes, uh, then this will facilitate things a lot. And uh, because they can uh, uh, act as the third leg to distinguish between buyer and seller, and uh, if somebody defaults, uh, markets can be, could be created for purchasing these uh, securities uh, in mm -hmm. other areas. And uh, this is the very important aspect to make successful uh, Islamic, uh, what you want to call it, repo or buyback or iadat uh, shira By the way, يعني, repo or buyback or iadat shira يعني, they are all the same, يعني, same terminologies. Uh, so it is not uh, different when we say iadat shira it's in Arabic, and in English, repurchase. So it's يعني, the same. It's the same, t same terminology. It is not different. Uh, but uh, the important thing is what is the underlying uh, principles under this repo, uh, whether it is based on uh, conventional interest based or whether it is based on uh, something else. That is the most important thing. So I don't have much to say more about this and I thank you very much for organizing this very nice webinar and uh, I apologize for not being able to continue more because I am traveling in half an hour. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Nizam and Safar and Saidan. Uh, I think uh, it is great uh, that I think the SNB's uh, structure can be a starting point for the standardization and yes. the challenge from uh, Sheikh Nizam, the strong clearing house. I think Dr. Omar, you are listening to this. <laughs> I'm not sure whether IILM can take the challenge or not. And uh, all our brothers and sisters, practitioners, I think this is uh, very important to have a strong clearing house. Um, I think, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sheikh Nizam. Uh, now let's go to uh, Sheikh Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz Khalifa Al Qassar. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Burhan Arbud, the head of Sharia Salam Bank. Since you are in Bahrain, uh, IIFM in Bahrain, maybe you want to talk a bit more about that. Tafadal uh, Mashkura, uh, Sheikh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala ashraf al-anbiya. First of all, I have to thank you for giving me this opportunity. I have an introduction to say that, first of all, we have to look into the objective of repo. What is the objective of repo? So if that objective can be accomplished by any other means, we don't need to stay on the repo itself as a repo because the idea of repo is liquidity management. So if you can get, have alternatives for the liquidity management, which is equivalent to repo, then we have to look at that. Another issue is that, as uh, was raised before, is that, uh, yes, uh, from Sharia point of view, any product may be done in a Sharia compliant manner. But the challenge we are facing is the technical issues. Like now, we talk about the clearing house and the technical issues, which has nothing to do with Sharia requirements. So what is needed is that the technical people should work around the Sharia requirements and bring that technical issues into the picture. Coming to the IFM, actually IFM, uh, the issue it, I, I don't remember the issue repo, but rather the issue credit support document. Credit support document is because of the ISDA agreement. ISDA agreement is a general agreement and you have to have uh, individual contracts under it. So the uh, credit support document is dealing with, uh, it's dealing with the, with the, with the asset. So uh, having said that, 
there are several repos structures which cannot be given one ruling. And even under this, however, if you look at the process of repo, it will be clear that various issues uh, as discussed need a thorough Sharia consideration. Hence, we need only to engineer general basis upon which the institution can depend to structure repos in the context of the local laws or internationally. In this regard, IOF standard or repage structure is a good start as the standard offered main ingredients of an acceptable repo transaction. So this main ingredients is what I am saying our problem is technical issue. So if the tech technicians can go around these main ingredients, we can find the repo transaction. However, in looking at issues of Sharia concern as pointed out, the main agreement, the main arrangement that struck my mind was like Bayul Wafa and Rahan. Okay, Bayul Wafa is a straightforward. This is a solution issue uh, later on. We'll go. But if you come to the Rahan, uh, we find out that even the hypothetication issue uh, from, from the Hambali, one of uh, maybe it's not the, 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 the view that is going on, is saying whether the creditor is the owner of the Rahan or the debtor. There is a view is saying the creditor is the owner of the Rahan and he can sell it. So if you check that one, then we will find out uh, a solution for the hypothesis. And again, there is a view which is saying whether who is servicing the, 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 the Rahan. The person who is servicing the Rahan is the one who is entitled to the benefit of the Rahan. So if you, uh, if you add a service aspect to the Rahan, then we can resolve <clears throat> the issue of uh, hypothetication. Another aspect I want to talk about, which I think uh, even IOF standard has uh, talked about, is the Ijara-based repo. We have not even, we have not talked about Ijara-based repo, which I, in my view, I'm seeing maybe viable and acceptable cross-border repo that may have little Sharia implications. This is because the user fract in the Ijara is in continuous change, and it comes into being gradually as rightly observed and confirmed by the juries. In this form of repo, the main requirement to establish a non-inner ingredient in order to trade the repo is, 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 is available and is met. Hence, the idea of what may even not be needed. However, in the securities, other than Ijara-based securities, INA can, cannot be eliminated except with a lapse of time between the sale and repages as the IOF standard goes in. Now, the main issues that we are giving to, we have to give it to the, to the uh, from my reading of the documentation of the repo, the main issues that we need uh, practitioners to resolve and come to us with an answer is the issue of transfer, the issue of the title transfer, the rules on the observation and the liability to rule purchase, the rule on cash margin and why cash margin is required, the rules on the uh, redemption proceeds, the rules on the equivalent asset concept. Sometimes the issue of initial asset is even confusing. In some such structures, the securities are kept by the buyer who earns the dividend of the asset until the observation date. In some cases, one observes that the securities are sold to a third party and the proceeds of such securities are deposited in the security account as initial asset. In both cases have some Sharia implications. We have another issue of the margin fee, and then we have the structuring fee. Having said this, I will differentiate between two forms of repos, and have written this before I hear our learned scholars talk about the SNB suku, uh, which is, I think, is, 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 complete, is in line with what I have even uh, written before. The repo, I differentiate between two. The repo in which one party sells security and the buyer owns the security, take the interest and rights and sell them to a third party, in turn the buyer receives an undertaking that the seller will later on buy equivalent 
The, the word equivalent and similar security is very important. Equivalent, it's not saying the same security. Equivalent means different security with different serial number, but it's Jara security. So in that case, it's completely something different. We do not be caught in any of the Sharia rules. So it's acceptable. This is uh, completely a, a straightforward Murabaha transaction. Another, another issue, another one, the second repo is the one involved the seller pretended to sell and the buyer pretended to buy, but the security will remain with the buyer until the observation date and then repurchase. This second repo is the one which is governed by the requirements and I will fear, and this is what we are talking about. This is the, this is the, the kind of repo that will have the issues that the Sharia, the Sharia issues that have been raised. So this is uh, generally. So this second form of repo is, is caught and cannot be retained. It's because it's not equivalent. It's the same. It's the same same scoop which will come back. Equivalent is different from the same. The same. So these are the differences that we have to take into consideration. And I do agree that uh, our issue. I don't see any problem that uh, in the repo, our problem is that we don't have this, the management, the, the clearing house, the technical prop people that can bring these Sharia requirements together and then create something. It's not a Sharia <laughs> issue from my point of view. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Arbona. Uh, really interesting. Uh, we are getting a... Uh... I mean, the, our wheel becoming more faster now. Uh, I think uh, you uh, correctly mentioned uh, the technical issues that need to be overcome. I mean, the transfer of ownership, the cash margin. I think the cash margin, maybe if we have time, we can come back to Dr. Elgari to ask him about how they manage the cash margin in their SNB structure. Uh, then the Rahan, you have uh, explained <laughs> more about Rahan and uh, the new. A repo based on Ijara, I think, uh, worth to look into uh, to study this, and inshallah. So, thank you very much, Dr. Arbuna. Now we come to Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz Al Qassar. Uh, maybe you want to touch uh, on any of the issues highlighted, Al Wa'ad, Wa'iyad, uh, so and so forth. So, the floor is yours, uh, Dr. Al Qassar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf talqillah, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf. First of all, I would like to thank IILM for organizing the fifth Sharia Roundtable and all of its participants. Perhaps this topic, Rebo Market, come in sensitive circumstance, especially with the challenge facing Islamic finance in light of the uh, technology development uh, and the financial technology in fintech. Uh, I think most of the idea and alternative was touched by uh, the scholar before, as uh, Dr. Mohammed al uh, giri also mentioned specifically to the product which uh, created by SMB and also Mr. Hamza. And uh, maybe I haven't much uh, issue to, to cover it, but I would like to highlight uh, one uh, specific uh, issue. I think perhaps the Rebo product through the promise from the buyer to the seller, it will be a proper solution. And I think uh, the main issue, is it the promise will be bilateral or the from two sides? And if we want to consider it's a promise, not a contract, I think the muwa'ada, which we call muwa'ada, it will be fine and acceptable from Sharia wise. Especially the Najma al Fiqh al Islami mentioned, I think, clearly. And if you allow me, uh, Dr. Ashraf, I will read the, the decision for Majma al Fiqh in Arabic because it's Islamic terminology. Yes, please, please. Yeah. 
they said مجلس المجلس مجلس مجمع الفقه الاسلامي المنبثق عن منظمه المؤتمر الاسلامي المنعقد قرر ما يلي اولا الاصل في المواعده من الطرفين انها ملزمه ديانه وليست ملزمه قضاء المواعده من الطرفين على عقد تحايلا على ربا مثل المواطاه على الغنى او المواعده على بيع وسلف ممنوع شرعا في الحالات ثالثا في الحالات التي لا يمكن فيها انجاز عقد البيع لعدم وجود المبيع في ملك البائع مع وجود حاجة عامة لإلزام كل من الطرفين بإنجاز عقد في المستقبل بحكم القانون أو غيره أو بحكم الأعراف التجارية الدولية كما في فتح الاعتماد المستندي لاستيراد البضائع فإنه يجوز أن تجعل المواعدة ملزمة للطرفين إما بتقنين من الحكومة وإما باتفاق الطرفين على نص في الاتفاقية يجعل المواعدة ملزمة للطرفين رابعا ان المواعده الملزمه في الحاله المذكوره في البند ثالثا لا تاخذ حكم البيع المضاف الى المستقبل فلا ينتقل بها ملك المبيع الى المشتري ولا يصير بها الثمن دينا ولا ينعقد البيع الا في الموعد المتفق عليه باجاب وقبول. For that I think uh, the product which uh, Dr. Muhammad Giri حفظه الله Uh, presented, I think it's very suitable and acceptable from uh, technical wise and Sharia wise, and I think uh, also the promise and undertaking in the nominal price or the market price, it will be also will be sold as 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 the Tom Hamid mentioned, and as long as we consider it's a promise and wa'ad, it's not a contract. Even the undertaking. Uh, implement with the nominal nominal price. I think, from my point of view, it will be acceptable also. So that I think most of the alternative product, which is scholar mentioned, I think it's uh, it's really uh, to have uh, a, a, a topic to 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 to, to avoid uh, the validity of Sharia point of view, and also. Uh, we can uh, 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 create uh, the product based, based on what uh, what we can implement in the in the in the true market. We cannot uh, create a product. We cannot implement it in the real market. So that I think the wide will be acceptable, especially with the condition mentioned from uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Giri. That's what I want to have. And thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Al Qassar, uh, highlighting the Al Muwaada issue. Uh, I think citing uh, the, the, I mean, uh, the statement from the Majma. I think uh, just to share with you the uh, we in Malaysia also the SAC, the Sharh Advisory Council of uh, the Bank Negara Malaysia also we have quite good uh, research on whether the uh, bilateral uh, what uh, constitute uh, akad or not. And we came to the same conclusion as mentioned by Dr. Al Qassar that it is not, uh, I mean, it does not constitute a future contract uh, because, for uh, for example, the ownership of the asset still maintained with the current owner, the liability still maintained with the current owner, even if there is zakat to be paid, the current owner needs to pay the zakat, so and so forth. So I think this is another area where uh, we can. Uh, Look into uh, as a Sharia scholars and practitioners uh, whether I think the muada uh, constitute uh, akad or not. Uh, anyway, I think uh, I'll uh, go to the uh, west now to Dr. Bashir uh, in Nigeria. I think it's still morning there, Dr. Bashir. Uh, you are still fresh there, <laughs> so the floor is yours to comment. Falitafadal uh, mashkura. Thank you very much, Professor Ashraf. Uh, I would like to start by uh, commending the ILM for holding this fifth round table. And uh, it is indeed a, a landmark event uh, that has brought industry practitioners and uh, Sharia scholars and uh, specialists to discuss an issue that is very, very important to uh, the development of the Islamic financial services industry. 
uh, the question of the issue of uh, repo is indeed very, very important. Uh, one area that I see where we need to give special attention to the question of repo is the recent decision to move away from LIBO to risk-free rates, especially the secured overnight uh, financing rate, which is based on uh, the repo rates of the U.S. Uh, of the U.S. Uh, Treasury. Uh, based on this, we see that there is this necessity. We have to address the issue of repo, and uh, I do. Uh, we have challenges with the recent structures of repo, uh, especially the question of the bilateral promise, which Alhamdulillah it has been addressed based on what uh, Professor Al Qasar has uh, graciously highlighted and also supported by Professor Ashraf. Uh, there is also the question of uh, uh, turning out, uh, going away from the, uh, the prohibition of joining together a contract of sale and a condition that will lead to uh, a river. And if the usage of what the usage of uh, unilateral promise will will not constitute a sharp, which is a position of the Hanafiya, and uh, that is an area which we need to also mention because the stipulation uh, when a cell is concluded and then a separate deed is made uh, that constitutes an undertaking uh, that will not uh, lead to. Uh, that, that will not constitute an ENA because it is not going to be two transactions in one transaction. That is unilateral trans, a unilateral promise is not regarded as a transaction, as a, as a sale transaction, nor is it tra regarded as a, as a condition in a sale transaction. Uh, the structure that has been offered by SNB, alhamdulillah, it has got widespread acceptance, at least at the level of the Saudi banks. So this is a stage. This is a step in the right direction, whereby it will have even an international appeal uh, by further developing it uh, through creating the clearing house. Conventional repos, they have got third party repos, which they have these clearing uh, houses that, that serve as custodians and also that, uh, that, that serve as, uh, uh, they also among their, function, among their function is to ensure that uh, the question of uh, specified margin is also applied, and that uh, settlement is done by the by uh, taking uh, recording the transaction in their books, and it also assists dealers in optimizing the usage of uh, collaterals. The last point that I want to mention is that uh, Islamic banks need to uh, uh, innovate in coming up with uh, alternative structures. That will uh, learn uh, that, that will not restrict themselves to the only form of repo, which is clearly a collateralized uh, interest loan, interest-based transaction, uh, because in substance it is related, uh, it is treated as uh, as an interest-based loan. We need to join together between debt financing and equity financing, and this is where the point raised by. Uh, Sheikh uh, 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 Al Qaradadi, uh, which he mentioned, which is also in the IOFI standard of the Adat Shira of repo. One of the alternatives mentioned is the investment deposits based on Mudarada. Uh, invest, investment deposits shall definitely serve as a, as a potential alternative to repo. If that is joined together with other debt financing uh, instruments like the SNB uh, uh, structure, or even the collateral, even the CMT structure, uh, coupled with the uh, equity financing structure of the of Mudaraba, then we'll have uh, we will have an optimum uh, finance, uh, an optimum supply of capital. The weighted average cost of capital is going to come down. As you see, they they write a parabola between the uh, between debt financing and equity financing which comes down with a mixture of debt financing with equity financing. So if Islamic banks can champion this through the usage of uh, Mudaraba investment accounts between the banks, this will uh, create a potential alternative
to the conventional debt financing, uh, uh, debt-based uh, repo. This is what I have at this juncture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bashir. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, I think uh, at the moment we have at least three structures, uh, the SNB structure, the proposed Ijara structure, and uh, again, repeated by Dr. Bashir, the uh, investment deposit based on Mudaraba. I think uh, we need to study them uh, carefully and uh, inshallah, hopefully we can uh, come to a good conclusion, inshallah. Uh, I would like to uh, encourage uh, my dear fellow uh, brothers and sisters to uh, ask questions uh, in the Q&A. There are two questions at the moment. Uh, it is not easy to get all our mashayikh in this uh, roundtable discussion to be together with us. So please take this opportunity uh, to type in your question. We will come to uh, your question later. Uh, we have time, inshallah. We have another 40 minutes to go. And... Um, now I'm coming to, uh, maybe uh, before I come to uh, Malaysia, coming back to Malaysia, maybe uh, I would like to, uh, if uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Razak, Prof. Razak uh, Alaru, if you are ready, maybe you want to start first to give your com comment on the topic. Uh, Dr. Alaru. If not, then uh, maybe uh, we can come back to Malaysia first. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, please. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, I, was, I was actually muting myself, so I just realized that. <laughs> please, uh, proceed, uh, Prof. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. First of all, I want to join others in commending the effort of ILLM by organizing this important gathering. And I see it as a right step in the right direction uh, to fine tune whatever is available in the markets today um, with a view to replacing the non sharia compliant uh, repo instrument. And uh, I'm also happy personally because uh, uh, we have an opportunity of being in the midst of our scholars and leading uh, global players in the industry. Um, and we, they have shared with us their experiences, different structures that have been introduced, whether in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Bahrain, and in Malaysia. Um, I think what we need to do at this point in time, already we have agreed on a point that the conventional repo is non-Sharia compliant, and that is a matter that is not even open to any debate. We have all agreed on that. So I think if you are able to distinguish between what is being introduced here and there, if you are able to distinguish between those structures that are being introduced as alternatives and what we have all agreed upon to be non-acceptable because it is non-Sharia compliant, if we successively do that, I believe we have covered more than 90% of our journey to have a repo that will be acceptable to all. And that is the basis of my own intervention at this point in time. Um, I want to look at those structures that have been introduced. How similar and how different are they from the conventional repo? Because we should be able to distinguish between it before we can start talking about them being alternatives to repo. And I would like to use uh, three different uh, benchmarks for my assessment of those projects. The first one is to look at the very nature of the repo as a conventional instrument. From the legal perspective, and even from the economic perspective, happily we listened to that this morning from the opening remark read on behalf of our Sheikh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Ali Khoury, that even from the economic perspective is not different. Repo represents a loan contract between two parties. That is the whole idea. Whether it is called repo case or resale, the whole idea is to loan an amount of money and to get back the capital with an amount of interest at the future date. That is the whole essence of the repo market, and that is the um, that that is what it stands to sell. Now, from that perspective, um, uh, I I see a very uh, striking similarity between repo as it is in the conventional practice, what have been introduced as alternatives. 
I'm coming from the background of the saying of Ibn Abbas and Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. Darahima bidaraim wa bainahuma hariya. So the, the idea is clear. The purpose is clear from the onset. So have we been able to take it far away from this realm of looking like a stratagem to just uh, run around what we all agreed upon to be uh, prohibited? So that is the first issue that I think uh, our scholars uh, should ruminate upon, try to distinguish between what we have as ripple and what have been introduced as alternatives. And from the perspective of what is the nature, what is the very purpose that ripple means and is meant to serve in the conventional practice. The benchmark number two that I would like to use in assessing those structures is to look at the parties involved, the parties involved in the conventional ripple. And I would like to draw uh, 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 a similarity here between what is the closest contract in the fiqh, in the Islamic fiqh, to the repo market. And I think everybody, everyone will agree with me that we don't have a closer concept to repo, conventional repo, than Bayou al Aina. So Bayou al Aina, principally, uh, uh, is, is not acceptable to the majority of Muslim Jews principally because it involves just two parties, one selling to another, uh, 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 presumably selling to another, to another, and buying back the same product from the, the presumed buyer. And that is why Tawarok is being seen as an acceptable alternative because it involves a third party. I'm, I'm trying to see a way of whether we can distinguish between the non-acceptable conventional report and what will be the alternative from the Sharia compliant? Perhaps by introducing a third party. Uh, I'm thinking whether a central bank can play such a role in our own Sharia compliant repo that will make it closer to the world group that we are off, at, at least majority of us have accepted it today to be a good alternative to AINA that is um, overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly rejected in the industry. So that is the second perspective that I'm coming from. Can we use that? as a way of moving repo that we are introducing away from AINA, away from the conventional practice, and closer to another concept that is already acceptable, which is Tawarok, by just bringing in a third party, maybe the central bank of every jurisdiction or any other party that can effectively play such a role. The third parameter that I would like to use uh, is when we talk about repo, whether it is from the conventional perspective or from the Islamic perspective, Presumably, presumably, we are talking about a sale contract. Uh, our Sheikh this morning rejected the use of repo, but my colleague, Professor Ashraf, as uh, uh, I think our Sheikh Dr. Nizam Yaqubi, has actually pointed to that fact that the other to Shira is the same as repo. It's just a matter of language, <laughs> just a matter of semantics. But they are all pointing to the fact that we are talking of a sale contract, whether real or unreal. The problem with the repo, conventional repo, is that we believe, and strongly do, we believe that the sale contract there is just a phony contract. It's just a legal strategy to legalize taking and paying interest. How are we going to structure our own Sharia compliant repo that will make the sale contract to be real? And that will set it different from what is unacceptable. And uh, going by the principle, the golden principle of business in Islamic law, I think we have to look at those uh, areas of concern when we are talking of real transfer of ownership. What comes after that of the risk attached when we say ownership is transferred? The third thing is to look at the liability for any loss that is incurred in the process. And at the same time, entitlement to benefit that may follow in the light of that principle, al-gunmu, al-gurmi, wal kharaju bil-baman. These are the three benchmarks that um, my thought is guiding me to use as perhaps a way of trying to move what we are introducing clearly away from what we have all agreed upon to be non-Sharia compliant and moving it closer to what would be accepted. And if you allow me in just one minute, we, uh, Dr. Burhan has talked about beautifully about technical issues. Yes, we need to, uh, our, our expert, our practitioners need to look into those technical issues. But I'm also adding that 
they will have to pay attention to legal issues as well. We are all talking about real ownership, real transfer in the Sharia compliant repo. But there is a problem from the legal perspective, especially because we are talking of Suku, which will have underlying assets. In most cases, those underlying assets are um, landed properties. When we have landed properties in most jurisdictions in the world, they will require you to register those instruments. They are registrable instruments. And in this way, I don't see a way uh, how that could be possible, that an asset that is used to structure a repo that is meant for short-term liquidity management will become registrable to transfer complete ownership. Uh, there's a case that is very popular in Malaysia. The, uh, the, the case is a part of a field case. Uh, Nick Ad Mahmoud uh, Ben Daoud and uh, Bank Islam Berhad. You know, the, the ratio for that case that made the judge to decide that even though you are calling this to be a sale contract, to me, there is no transfer of ownership from the beginning to the end because the property involved, the, the, the registration of the property involved has never changed throughout the lifespan of the contract. So we have to pay attention to this one also. It could be uh, a very real challenge for us in structuring a Sharia compliant uh, repo that will be acceptable across the board. And once again, I thank you for this opportunity uh, to participate and to learn from our learned scholars and Mashaik all over the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Razak. I think we Mr. Can... Chairman. Yes. Uh, Are you going to give me some time to address some of the points? Of course. Of course. Uh, I'll come back to that, inshallah, uh, Prof. Uh, let us uh, finish this uh, first round. Of course, there are two questions to Prof. Elgari, uh, and there is one question open to anybody who wants to answer. Uh, uh, after Prof. Akram and Prof. Nku will come and uh, will give an opportunity uh, for you to answer the question before we go to the second round, inshallah. So uh, we can use the three benchmark uh, to, to check as a test asset on the Sharia compliance of the proposed repo, inshallah. And since uh, Dr. Abdul Razak mentioned about Malaysia, about Aina, about uh, one of the court cases in Malaysia, I think we'll come back to Malaysia. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Prof. Nku Rabea, uh, is it really a repo uh, practice in Malaysia based on Aina? We, 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 we have heard from Datuk Muhammad uh, Zabidi in the morning, uh, in the first session. So the floor is yours, uh, Prof. Nku. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ishma'in. Thank you, uh, Prof. Ashraf. Assalamualaikum. So um, being uh, the second last speaker, I would try to to be brief uh, and basically responding first to the question posed to me on the issue of whether uh, the practice of Islamic repo in Malaysia uh, actually amounts to a Ba'al Inna transaction or not. Uh, so I have, have been explained earlier by Datuk Zabidi that we have two structures, the SBBA structure, sales and buyback arrangement, and also the collateralized community Mrabaha or CCM arrangement. Uh, so initially when we had the SBBA, um, the the resolution in Malaysia, the Qarar in Malaysia is that it's not a by al uh, because uh, for by al -ina, there are certain features that we uh, we define uh, by al -ina, which uh, with uh, which is more or less uh, in line with the definition in the Shafi'i school of what is by al -ina. and then when we studied the SBBA structure that was brought before the SAC of the Central Bank, we found that there are certain features that make it not technically about uh, Al-Ina uh, transaction. Uh, one of the main features is because uh, the two legs of the transaction, the, the original seal uh, by the seller uh, and the second leg of the transaction, the repurchase later, were both uh, um, cash transactions. So, because normally in Ba Al-Ina, we have one leg is deferred and the other leg is cash. Okay, that's one feature which distinguish. The second one is there is a gap in time between the first leg of the sale and the second leg of the purchase. So there's a gap in time. And then the other uh, re uh, uh, reasoning is uh, what is the sort of the link in between is just the what the unilateral promise. So after selling uh, the securities, uh, there is... Um, 
a promise or wa'at and the ruling by the SAC was that the wa'at must be totally separate from the origin, the first sale. So the wa'at is separate. So then there's undertaking to repurchase uh, the securities at a future date. Uh, and perhaps the controversy is because there is an agreed exercise price as to the uh, the price of the purchase in the future. Uh, but this one was ruled by the SAC as not amounting to Ba'al Inah because Wa'at, as we know and agree, unilateral Wa'at is not akad and there's no purchase yet at that point of time. So the purchase only happen later upon maturity of the of the repo. Okay, so that is uh, how we distinguish it. And I believe uh, in the Saudi National Bank SNB structure also, uh, there is a sale and there is also a promise, uh, actually two promises. Uh, one is a promise to purchase and the other is a promise to sell. And again, I would believe that the SNB structure has also distinguished itself and said that this is not a Ba'al Inah, uh, although there is a repurchase by the same seller uh, in the future, uh, but because it's linked to uh, some kind of condition. So so I think that the, the structures actually for repo, at least to my opinion, has tried to avoid Ba'al Ina. Uh, but of course, not everybody would agree that it has successfully avoided Ba'al Ina uh, totally or, or not. Okay, that is another issue that I don't want to delve into too much detail. Uh, but before I go further, what I want to clarify is in Malaysia now, uh, the SBBA structure was not uh, even popular because of its inability to replicate the specificities of conventional repo, uh, like uh, the ability of the seller to still enjoy the coupon uh, on the securities which has been sold. If we do the uh, SBBA, because it's outright sale of the securities to the buyer, uh, then the coupon will not be enjoyed by the original seller and therefore it does not replicate some of the important characteristics of repo that investors may be expecting. So, so that's why it was not popular. And because of that, later in Malaysia, we have the commodity uh, collateralized uh, commodity Murabaha introduced in 2012. And that was uh, more of a, a replication of the conventional repo in the various specificities that the parties wanted. Uh, but having said that, what I want to highlight is actually uh, if you want to really have um, a good uh, solution, uh, we need to decide whether we really want to have, uh, like uh, Sheng Al-Qadari mentioned earlier, whether we really want to have an Islamic repo with all the features of a conventional repo, uh, then we are very much constrained, or we actually wanted to introduce uh, an Islamic liquidity instrument, which is not tied up with the specific characteristic of repo, but have its own characteristics, uh, pros and cons that, that we think is superior than the conventional repo, then we can work on more innovative uh, instruments uh, that, that, that we are not constrained by the, 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 the fences of conventional repo. So that is, I think, one, this, one thing that we need to perhaps discuss with the practitioner uh, because I think as Sharia advisors, Sharia, uh, Sharia scholars, normally we respond to the, uh, the demand by the market. But if, if we find something which is fully Sharia compliant, uh, but it doesn't fit with the repo uh, characters, you know, like in terms of, uh, enjoyment of coupon, in terms of ability to have rehypothecation, uh, all the other uh, features of, of, of repo, uh, then such uh, you know, very superior Shara compliant instrument may not be sale, uh, saleable, it will not be taken by the market. Uh, but if we were to really strictly confine to the specific characteristics of repo and try to to you know, uh, tweak our Sharia contracts to meet that, then I think we will never have a consensus as to whether this is acceptable or not. Because when we tweak uh, the original uh, rules in the Ukut Musamma, then we would tend to actually, uh, you know, uh, trigger a response from the Sharia uh, scholars. Some would say this is not acceptable, this is acceptable and whatnot. Okay, so that is, I think, the bottom line. We need to really decide whether we want so-called Islamic repo or we just want an Islamic money market instrument that is working at part or more superior than repo. So that is, I think, uh, something that we need to decide before we can go into more innovative products moving forward. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Prof. Thank you. Very interesting and very challenging. <laughs> the, the, the question that we need to answer whether we want uh, repo as in conventional, of course, uh, not the, the same, but all the futures are there. Or we challenge ourselves to have our own uh, liquidity management instrument. Uh, last but not least, uh, Prof. Akram, your views, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Ashraf. Jazakallah khairan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anjai wa al-musaleem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Respected scholars, uh, Prof. Kuradari, Prof. Al-Gari, and also the rest of my uh, honorable scholars. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His grace and mercy. And I would like to take this opportunity <coughs> to thank IILM for I mean, coming up with this fifth uh, round table. And I would also like to thank them for inviting Isra also as the co-organizer for this uh, event. And I believe that, I mean, this kind of event that we have, uh, I mean, it is a great forum for the scholars, practitioners to come together and also uh, to discuss uh, in order for us to resolve, I mean, the different issues. Now, uh, I think a lot has been said. I'm going to try to be brief uh, in my remark. Uh, I think one of the issues that I would like to highlight here is that uh, the need uh, for the different uh, stakeholders in the industry to come together in order for us to uh, address, I mean, this issue of repo. Of course, I think uh, the challenge, uh, as all of us know, is that uh, in the financial institution is that we still lack, I mean, adequate uh, liquidity management tools uh, in order for Islamic finance financial institution to move forward. And we tend to, you know, look at our conventional counterpart, what is there, and repo is one of the alternatives that is available in the uh, conventional space. So we try to look how can it be replicated uh, in the Islamic uh, financial uh, institution as well. Now, uh, this will entail, of course, I think a lot of discussion has been taken place, uh, as mentioned our, by our earlier honorable scholars, that earlier on we have discussed, and I remember even in IIFM, there, are, there, there were discussion on, on, on the issue of repo. And to a certain extent, we are able to come up uh, with certain alternative, uh, and I'm, I'm happy also to, to note that I think what was mentioned by Honorable Dr. Algari about the SNB initiative, you see that uh, most of the scholars in Saudi, they have agreed on this uh, initiative. And I think moving forward, we need to have more of this uh, in order for us to try to bring, I mean, the scholars as well as the uh, practitioners uh, on board in order for us to discuss. Now, one of the challenge, uh, I ponder with what uh, Prof. Unku have said earlier on that we need to be more innovative uh, in coming up with our with, with the change that we want in the market. You see, if we keep on pondering what is there in conventional and try to some sort of Islamize what is there in conventional, uh, I believe that we will be you know mm -hmm. at the same pace. But we have a lot of uh, avenues uh, for us to innovate, for us to try to find a new. So we need to dig uh, into the rich literature of fiqh in order for us to find what will be the alternative. And I think if you look into the IOFI standard, uh, when IOFI standard talks about repo, I mean, there are several uh, alternatives uh, that was uh, uh, mentioned in IOFI standard. And among others, I think, have been sent, uh, uh, informed by our uh, honorable scholars. And I think one of the alternative or suggestion that was brought uh, in the IOFI standard is also the Al-Qurut Al-Mutabadala, or exchange loans through points. This is one of the avenue that perhaps we can also try to explore, you see, and this can be done through calculating the credit points, taking into account the amount of the balance and its duration, and in return, debit points are calculated on the debit balance in which only the amount and period are taken into account. Except that, of course, I think the one of the challenges that uh, for us to move ahead uh, through this model is that the infrastructure. We need to create the infrastructure. Uh, I think in the SNB initiative, I mean, there is the IDA system or ADA system, which uh, facilitates 
you see the uh, transfer of the collateral. I mean, that is a great uh, initiative. You see, and if we go through uh, even what was uh, what was uh, suggested by Honorable Professor uh, Huradari uh, to establish an, uh, a fund investment account, you see, through Mudarabah, Musharaka, I mean, all this, uh, or even we, we can use Wakala, I mean, all these tools, I mean, we can always use uh, in order for us to uh, move forward. But again, uh, I would say that there are different challenges. You see, we need to move away from our conventional thinking uh, in mind. Uh, I mean, mentioning about this, I think uh, if we look uh, into some of the development that is happening in the market nowadays, there are people who sometimes could not accept certain kind of changes. Take, for example, I mean, we have the standard 59 of IOP. Uh, it, that, I mean, the sale of debt. I mean, there are a lot uh, that has been said. I mean, it is difficult to implement, uh, particularly on the uh, ratio of the tangible, intangible asset, the rollover and whatnot. But if you look into the market, uh, when, uh, for example, in UAE, when the, the, when the Sharia standard was uh, made mandatory, there are a lot of discussions uh, between the scholars, the practitioners and whatnot. Okay, at the end of the day, we can try to find a solution uh, in order to accommodate the requirement that is there in the standard. And I think this is the kind of dynamic that we need in the market nowadays, that we have been there in the market uh, for uh, over 40, 50 years, you see, and we need to move forward and try to come up with something new, not just ponder with whatever we have uh, in the past. And the different alternative. Uh, will entail different challenges in infrastructure, as I mentioned. We need to have more cooperation between the uh, stakeholders, between the Islamic financial institution. Unfortunately, I think in most cases nowadays, we have been working in silo. And of course, nowadays, I mean, we have the technology. You see, we have blockchain. I mean, fintech is there. How can we empower this technology in order for us to facilitate and find the way out uh, in order for us to 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 move forward and i think like ifm i mean they have the yada to shira project uh, with several models uh, perhaps i mean you can go and read i mean the concept paper it is there on the on the web i mean these are all the models that we can always uh, explore and in, in in order for us to move forward and i look forward of course i mean to the suggestion from the practitioners from the scholars and hopefully i mean we can uh, always uh, uh, overcome, I mean, whether it is a legal documentary, documentation challenges, I mean, regulatory challenges and whatnot. Uh, but I believe that we have the capability, we have the ability to come up with our own solution rather than just harping on what is there in the uh, conventional uh, space. So I, I think I'll stop there. Prof. Ashraf, thank you very much. Perhaps, I mean, there are several questions there uh, and we can give the avenue for the scholars to address those questions. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam. Thank you, uh, Prof. Akram. I think with all the scholars on this uh, virtual roundtable, we can talk until sahur. <laughs> but uh, we do not have time, my dear respected <laughs> audience. We have only 10 minutes left or 11 minutes to be precise. Uh, I'll come back to Prof. Elgari to answer the question uh, and to uh, make his uh, final remark in uh, one or two minutes, and followed by other mashayikh uh, for your final remarks on way ahead, on the standardization, and maybe uh, some suggestion for this uh, cross-border kind of repo market. Uh, uh, over to you, Prof. Elgari. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to comment on some of the things I heard from the scholars. Uh, let me start with Professor Alaro, who uh, mentioned that this uh, structure may be uh, the type of Bayal Hina, uh, but uh, this cannot be so because Bayal Hina requires debt, but these two sales are all cash bases and there is no debt created here. So they cannot be Bayal Hina. And the second point is uh, Dr. Arbuna, who mentioned that uh, in the Hanbali Madhab, uh, they allow, they, they say, I mean, there, there is a saying that uh, the, the collateral is owned uh, by the creditor, of course, this is correct. I mean, uh, he, what he quoted is, is correct, but it is a very uh, sort of uh, weak uh, 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 narration. 
And uh, furthermore, it, it will not work because because not only that it is very strange in our day today, but also because it, it's contrast uh, with the, you know, when people have a dispute, they have to go to the law and the laws does not uh, accept uh, this. I mean, uh, uh, um, ownership can only move if there is a sale contract, but collateral cannot uh, be assumed to be creating ownership. And uh, Dr. Abdelaziz Qassar, who mentioned that the Muada would be okay. Of course, uh, he is 100% correct, and the Majma has uh, uh, issued a declaration about this. But uh, even for those who are still not very comfortable with the Muada, uh, if we look at these two uh, promises, they are not uh, going to happen at the same time. So they can still be considered two separate uh, promises and not uh, Muada. And finally, for the margin, of course, uh, 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 because you you are giving an undertaking, and this undertaking is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for my benefit. So I want to make sure that you do, and you will be honoring your undertaking. And uh, uh, of course, uh, you are undertaking to purchase at a certain price, but the price in the market is going up and down. So when the price is going down, I'd like you to put uh, going up. I'd like you to put a margin so that I know you will be able to honor your uh, uh, commitment. And of course, uh, uh, the margin will be marked to market as the mo price move, and it will be used in a, an investment account for your own benefit. And when once uh, we uh, establish this uh, clearing house, inshallah, all these problems will be will be will be solved. Uh, the, you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, that there was a question uh, from the audience. I, I, I didn't see the question, so if you can read it, please. The question is number one: whether the SNB structure is uh, fully comply with uh, IOP Sharia standard, and then how you address the margining. I think those are the two question. Uh, yeah, the margin thing I have uh, already addressed, and. Uh, well, I, 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 I cannot claim that uh, we have uh, compared the structure to the requirements of uh, IUV standard. But as, as you know, IUV standards are not compulsory here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, my my uh, guess is that it will not uh, be violating any uh, IUV standard. Allahu alam. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykhuna. Uh, good news that uh, our uh, organizer gave us about five or ten minutes uh, extension of time uh, at the expense of our stretch break. So if you need to stretch yourself, stretch it now. <laughs> well, uh, virtually. Uh, now we go to Sheikh Ali Al Quradari. Al Kalim Al Akhirah min Fadilatikum Sheikhuna. Fi daqiqa daqiqa tain salasa daqiq wa tafadl mashkura. بارك الله فيكم عفوا معذرة حقيقة أولا أنا استفدت من كل ما قيل من هذه الكلمات الجيدة من يعني الذين يمثلون البنوك المركزية ومحافظو البنوك المركزية وكذلك أصحاب الفضيلة وكذلك إخواننا الفنيون كانت حقيقة يعني ندوة أو ثرة بكل ما تعني الكلمة وثرية وبالتأكيد إن شاء الله نستفيد منها أنا كان حقيقة عندي يعني بعض الملاحظات على المنتج, على المنتج السعودي باعتبار أن المنتج السعودي قائم على المواعدة أو حتى الوعدين الوعدين ليس هناك فرق قانونيا بين وعدين ما دام تلاقيا على موضوع واحد وبين يعني المواعدة المواعدة لغويا هو الجمع بين وعدين لكن إذا كان وعدان كل وعد يتجه نحو اتجاه هذا أمر آخر حقيقة الأمر الثاني هو مسألة الوعد يعني بالشراء بالتأكيد لا يتم بسوق كما أشار أخي دكتور القري إنما يتم عن طريق يعني 
القيمة الإسمية يعني أو المتفق عليها الأمر الذي كان محل إشكال عندي لا زال وأنا حقيقة اطلعت على ما تفضل به أخي دكتور القري من خلال ما نشر في الصحف والوسائل الإعلام السعودية مسألة أيضا قضية البايع حينما يبيع هل يتحمل فعلا الآن حسب المنتج السعودي أن المشتري يتحمل كامل المسؤولية حقيقة أنا حسب معلوماتي أنا لم أقوم بدراسة علمية دقيقة لكن أمامي المعيار الذي درسته دراسة قوية واطلعت حقيقة على المنتج السعودي لا أعتقد أن هذه الشروط وضوابط التي اشترطت في إعادة الشراء في معيار 58 متوافرة في يعني هناك زمن هناك ترتيبات يا دكتور القري هناك تقريبا خمسة شروط أساسية في هذه المسألة والله أعلم يحتاج فعلا إلى الحكم لكن حسب معلوماتي لا تتوافر في هذه الأمور يعني عادة غيب التقليدي البايع هو كما قال بعض الإخوة يتحمل البايع هو له الحق في التصرف حتى مرات بالنسبة للغيب والتقليدي أخذ الفائدة فيعني أنا لست ضد هذا البديل أبدا أي شيء ينفع المسلمين أنا معه ولكن بصراحة أنا أطلب وأطالب بقوة أن نتجه نحو الصيرفة الإسلامية وأن نخرج من دائرة يعني يعني حقيقة المخارج والحيل وما أشبه ذلك أنا لا أقول هذا حيل لكنه من المخارج التي مثل ما قال أخي دكتور بشير لا تخرج أبدا عن دائرة الديون هي بديل واقعي حتى سواء كان البدائل المطروحة إلى الآن بدائل في دائرة الديون بينما الذي أنا طرحته طرحت فكرتين فكرة المضاربة يعني يعني السلسة الدوارة وهذا يعني جيد يعني أنا الآن كمؤسسة ألف أتفق مع مؤسسة باء في كل في جميع الأحوال بيني وبينه فلما وأتفق على سقف مضاربة وبالتالي يسحب مني فيحسب له ربحه ولو لمدة يومين أو ثلاثة أيام لأنه يعني الآن كمبيوتر يحسب أو أنا أحسب منه فيحسب لي ربح المضاربة وأستثمره في مضاربة في الوعاء العام أو في الوعاء الخاص هذا حقيقة بديل جيد وبديل ممتاز البديل الآخر حقيقة أيضا بديل متميز بديل يعني واقعي إحنا مشكلتنا في أزمة الاقتصادية عام 2008 كانت مشكلة أنها أزمة الديون واليوم نحن في البنوك الإسلامية ندور ونلف وندخل في الديون من في التورق التورق المنظم حتى تورق اللي يتم حقيقة لا يخلو عن إدارة الديون بصراحة وإدارة السيولة الشكل الآخر أريد البنوك الإسلامية اليوم أكثر من 300 بنك لماذا لا يتفقون أو لا تتفق هذه البنوك على تشكيل صندوق استثماري كل واحد يدخل فيه جزء ثم هذا يقسم رأس المال أو الموجودات على وحدات استثمارية قابلة للبيع والشراء دائما مثل الأسهم لكن أخف من الأسهم آه هذه حقيقة المقترحات التي أريد الذي أرجو يعني دون أن لا سامح الله أتجه إلى التحريم أو شيء الذي أرجو أن تتجه الصيرفة الإسلامية إلى البدائل إلى الاقتصاد العيني إلى اقتصاد التملك إلى اقتصاد ينفع يعني هذا حقيقة مجرد دوار أبيع لك وتشتري مني يعني لم نزد شيئا مثل التورق لو عملنا عشرات المليارات بالتورق عبر عفوا بورصة لندن أو شيكاغو ما حركنا السوق حتى ولا حركنا سوق بريطاني إنما الذي استفاد هو البروكر لأنه حقيقة هو تعامل في الأوراق وليس تعاملا في الأسواق فأرجو أن لا يكون الريب الإسلامي أيضا نوعا من هذا التعامل في الأوراق ولا يكون له أي دور في الأسواق والتنمية وجزاكم الله خيرا وشكرا لكم وشكرا لأخي دكتور أشرف أيضا على صبره علينا وإتاحة الفرصة لي مرة ثانية وللمنظمين مرة أخرى وجزاكم الله خيرا شكرا شكرا شيخنا دكتور مستر تشيرمان بليز كان 5 سكند بليز 
Uh, okay, I, I think I'll give you the last one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. I, I'm not going to 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 have my comment on that. Uh, this is the beauty of the roundtable discussion. Actually, I'll come back to you. I promise, Dr. Elgari. Okay. Now we go to Dr. Arbona. Uh, one or two minutes. If you have anything. One yeah, or two I, minutes, yes. Well, uh, yeah, I, I have uh, issues uh, raised by Dr. Professor Alaru. And first of all, we have to know the purpose of repo. We are not looking at the lending and borrowing aspects. We are looking at the uh, uh, liquidity management aspect. So if you have something that will will arrive at liquidity management aspect. That is the one that we have to look into. This is one thing. That part, uh, in my view, the repo is more closer to bayou wafa rather than bayou laina And uh, why uh, we are saying repo is not like lending and borrowing? Because why a person, if he wants lending and borrowing, why he will not go directly and borrow? and then will go and put his uh, securities. There is a purpose for it, and that purpose, irrespective, we want to meet that purpose with the Sharia compliant one. Irrespective whether we call it repo, we call it mudaraba, we call it musharaka, and so on. And I have said that Ijara is, in my view, is a very. Thirdly, the last thing I want to say is that we can see that there are a lot of different uh, products for repo. Yeah, we have a number of different products for repo, and all of them can be a cross-border repo transactions with the help of the practitioners and acceptability. In the legal sense, whether uh, if you use it underlying asset, the, the same thing is shares. Shares are traded and within people, and they are trading it, and there is no the registration is happening. So the trading itself, whether it's not transferring or auditing, will be the same as uh, shares. Thank you very much. Shukran, shukran, Jazilan. Uh, Dr. Abdelaziz, Qassar? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three points quickly. Uh, first, uh, we absolutely agree that in the event of uh, a sale in a repo product, all rights uh, to the purchaser, purchaser should be passed. And we are not talking about the formality. Uh, second, uh, it's very important to find a Sharia solution and serve the Islamic financial industry through Sharia products that are applicable in the financial reality and achieve the desired financial objective. The third, uh, the standard with respect to all the standards from IOFI for uh, especially uh, 59 selling debt, it's too difficult to implement from a, a practical point of view. And uh, it contains a technical requirement, not a condition. And most of the solution uh, are presented are complicated and not applicable. So why do we resort to restrict our Islamic uh, wild fiqh. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Al-Qassar. Uh, Dr. Bashir, over to you. Okay. Uh, I just want to reiterate the importance of the alternative, the equity financing uh, alternative that needs to be pursued uh, in, uh, in structuring uh, any Sharia compliant uh, report. Uh, I'm not against uh, debt financing completely, uh, but uh, I think uh, this is an area that Islamic finance will indeed bring a breakthrough to the financial markets. Uh, a mixture of debt financing together with equity financing with slow uh, moving away from debt to equity, I think is healthy for Islamic finance and it's healthy for the global financial industry as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof. Abdurraza Alaru. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the second opportunity. Uh, well, my own uh, uh, addition is not different, different from what my predecessors just said. 
what we are witnessing in almost every jurisdiction today is that people are not seeing the real difference between conventional finance and Islamic finance. And the reason responsible for that is our over-reliance on debt-based financial contract. So I think what we should be thinking of is what Dr. Bashir has just said. We need to move this industry away, little by little, not plunging it further into what would make it look like a conventional practice that is named Islamic is very, very critical. Because what we witness, what we hear people talking about today is that a layman find it difficult to see the real difference between the two practices. And the better we move to the equity-based transactions, uh, the, 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 the more we move in that direction, the clearer the difference between the two practices become. Uh, and finally, uh, Dr. Burhan, I was talking about registrable instrument in law. Registrable instrument relates to landed properties. Registration of landed properties is not the same as registration of shares. When we talk of registrable instrument, we are talking of landed properties that are used mainly as underlying uh, asset for support. That one will require uh, splitting the ownership between a beneficial owner and a legal owner, and it will create a lot of complications as well. Thank you, Thank Prof. You very Thank you very much. Uh, Prof. Nku, half a minute, please. <laughs> Thank Anything you. from your side? Yeah. Yeah, just basically uh, focusing on the <clears throat> uh, Islamic repo product that are now in the market. Uh, so far, I think the ones which are of perhaps uh, better acceptance would be the collateralized community Murabaha, generally speaking. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the SNB structure is also very potential, I think, because of uh, the various behaviors that has been explained seems to be almost a uh, complete uh, replication of the very features of conventional repo that 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 uh, is necessary, uh, but then uh, both actually are uh, from the Sharia point of view are very different, uh, because in the uh, SMB structure, or even for our SBBA structure before in Malaysia, uh, we have uh, the sale of the underlying asset. And then there is a repurchase, uh, whether the repurchase is through the unilateral wa'ad like our SBBA or through wa'dan like SNP. And if you were to accept the majma al fiqh maybe in the future more ada, uh, maybe for those who allow for more ada, uh, but there will be an, a repurchase of the asset. And if you look at the IO Fisher standard, uh, there are some uh, stringent limitations and restraints on the other to shira uh, to avoid al ina issue and uh, to avoid uh, fixing the price and whatnot. So that would be quite uh, difficult to, to comply with. Uh, but the benefit of such structure is there is a sale. So the buyer has some benefits uh, that in the conventional repo, they have that benefits. Like if there is a default, they can just sell off the, the securities uh, and, and take whatever coming from there. Uh, and then they can have a rehypothecation and whatnot. Okay? Uh, but if you look at the uh, CCM, uh, because there's no sale of the underlying asset, the underlying asset still remain with the uh, original party. So what happens is just a community murabaha. Uh, so when the, the asset is used as a rahan, uh, then the investor have very limited uh access or, or right over the rahan. I mean, even if they want to sell it, they need to get order from the court and things like that. Okay, so uh, even they cannot benefit in terms of rehypothecation. So there are uh, limitations in both uh, structure uh, because they involve uh, different uh, contracts and different Sharia implications. So uh, I think if we want to find one one or two structures that we want to stand up, we have to take note of all these specificities of each of these products. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Anku. Prof. Akram, uh, you have talked about uh, what, yeah. Yeah, and just just briefly, I think one last point that I would like to reiterate is that uh, for us to look into the different alternative that is available. My concern sometimes is that, I mean, you have developed market, you see, you have perhaps, I mean, new market, and sometimes we are struggling in new markets to find what is the you see the liquidity management uh, tools that can be used. So it will be good moving forward for us to look into the 
I mean, provide different alternative to the okay. to the market yeah. so that I think with the different uh, tools that is suggested uh, earlier on. So inshallah, we can cater for the underdeveloped market as well as the developed market. Thank you very much. I think I'll stop there. Jazakallah. Thank you, Prof. Akram. It is what Mulizim on me to come back to Prof. Elgari. Uh, two or three minutes, Prof. Uh, by the virtue of you are the chairman of uh, Shanah Committee or ILM, the host of this uh, roundtable discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just three points briefly. First of all, uh, I don't know why do we need to invoke uh, uh, Standard 59. Standard 59 is sale of debt. But this uh, structure doesn't have any debt. Both sales are cash. So, standard 58, Sheikh. Huh? 58. Standard 58. 58 is sale of debt, right? No, it added to Shira. Okay, out to Shira. Thank you very much. So 59 is out. Now, it added to Shira. Actually, we, are, we, are, we call it Rebo, but this structure is not an actual Rebo because you are not buying the same thing you are selling. Standard where you sell something and you buy it back. But here, you only buy similar. Why? Because the other party is going to sell. The other party is after cash. And once they buy from you, they will sell. So what you are buying is similar and not the same. So even uh, standard 58 is, is not relevant here. And the third point is uh, Muvaraba. Of course, Muvaraba will work, as suggested by Sheikh Ali Quradagi, but with only one condition. If you make the Muvarab liable, Tadmeen al Muvarab, if you may if you made him liable, then it will work. Otherwise, no bank will give money for somebody to use it and come back and say, sorry, we made loss in your money, but in our money, we made a lot of profit. We'll keep it for ourselves. Nobody will accept <laughs> this. This will not work. So uh, this is the problem. You see, developing, developing an Islamic structure is faced by many red lines. The first one is Sharia, of course. And the second is regulation. And the third is accounting standard. And the fourth is law. So to, to, to navigate your way through all these problems is an ex ex extreme challenge. So really, I mean, the, 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 the structure we have at hand for Rebu, which is, uh, again, uh, reiterate that a Rebu is very important to manage, manage liquidity. And managing liquidity is not making profit. It's not an investment. Managing liquidity is not an investment. It is managing liquidity. So we, don't, we should not look uh, at this uh, structure and say, oh, there is more profitable ways of, uh, no, no, no. It's not for profit, it is for managing liquidity. And furthermore, to reach this solution, which satisfies all the requirements, wallahi, it is quite an accomplishment. I would like to congratulate, congratulate SMB and congratulate uh, brother Hamza. Uh, he, he, he made a huge effort in pushing this thing, alhamdulillah, it came out. And uh, uh, yani, let me make a prediction. It will, it will be supreme and it will be used by everybody, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Elgari. Thanks, uh, all my shayikh. Uh, please accept my apology for any shortcomings uh, managing this session, uh, particularly for the four minutes extra time. Uh, back to you, Madam uh, Chairperson.